morning, church. Blessed to be back with all of you once again. And happy Easter. It is a great day to rejoice because if we don't rejoice today, when shall we? Because it is on this day that Jesus conquered death and he rose again. He's seated on the throne and that's the reason why we celebrate Esther. What is the point of celebrating Esther if Jesus had not risen from the dead? And therefore, I would like to encourage all of you to join along with me and rejoice for what Christ has done for you and me. This morning, I want to talk to you about something that the Lord has been speaking to my heart for this particular Sunday. And I want to talk to you about a message called burning hearts burning for Jesus there are lots of ways that we can burn things for there is a worldly person that can burn for the things of this world and there is a godly person who are burning only for the things of God and therefore today my message will be only burning for the kingdom of God for Jesus and I hope all of us will be encouraged will be blessed and not only that we will live our lives in a very different way from now on shall we go into the word of God shall we turn our Bible to the gospel of Luke chapter 24 Luke chapter 24 and verse 28 to 35 verse 28 to 35 then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone further but they constrained him saying Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not a heart burn within us while he talked with us? on the road and while he opened the scripture to us so they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon and he told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread i would like to get our eyes on one particular verse and that is in verse 32 and it says like this and they said to one another did not our heart burned within us i just like to stop there did not our hearts burn within us the first point of burning for jesus or having a burning heart is that when Christ was sharing the word of God to these two disciples, the reaction in their, in their life was, there was a burning of their hearts. Burning of their hearts. In other words, when the word of God is preached from the pulpit, there needs to be a burning or there needs to be a conviction of a heart. Luke chapter 12 and verse 35 it says like this dress yourself and keep your lambs burning we need to be ready to share the gospel at the same time our life which is the lamp should always be burning burning for the Lord not coal but burning if we are not burning are going and sharing the word of God will be of no value if you're a preacher of god's word i want to tell you if you are not burning for the kingdom of god if you don't have a burning for the things of god your preaching will go in vain because only if we burn for the things of god then the wind we preach the word of god it'll be with fire when you look into the scripture and then like in the book of acts chapter 2 where on the day of the Pentecost, God sent the fire from heaven. And the 120 disciples were, were waiting for the fire to come down. And when it came and fell on every person, what happened was that they began to speak in tongue. And they didn't stay there. The Bible says 
they were, they were full of the fire and they began to spread to different places, different countries. So the first evangelism happened when the fire came upon them. When the fire of God comes and burns within us, we will not be, we will not be um, convenient Christians, should I say. Comfortable Christians. We would like to go and share the word of God. That's one thing I want to say. You see, when you look into the scripture one more time, especially in the book of Jeremiah chapter 20, and if you look at verse 11, he says like this, the word of God is like a fire in my bones. It, I cannot contain it. it is, it's burning inside of me. That I need to share. See, Jeremiah was a rejected prophet. Nobody liked him. And so what happened was that Jeremiah says, I've promised not to share the word of God. But he says, but I cannot contain it. I have to share it. You see, some of us, even after we are pushed to share it, also we don't want to share it. And here the, the, the Bible says, the word of God is inside of me. And it is burning inside of me. I have to share it. It's very important that we live our life burning for Jesus. When you look in the Gospel of John chapter 15, it says, it says, abide in me. Abide in me. If you abide in me and he and us, God in us, what will happen is that the promise is that we will bear fruit. So when the fire of God is in me, see, just to go back to, this, to the scripture about these two disciples, if you read from verse 13 onwards, the same book, and then like verse 13 all the way, you will find that like both of them were sad and disappointed because of what has happened. On Good Friday, Jesus died. On, on Easter Sunday, his dead body is already taken away. They are confused where the dead body is. So they are very disappointed and they are going back to their village called Imas. And while they are going back, Jesus comes along and begins to share the word of God to them. Jesus does not say, hey guys, look at me. I'm Jesus. I've risen. He does not say. In fact, he begins to just share the word of God all the way from Genesis to the book of Malachi. He shares the word of God. Which also shows to me and which also tells me that for Christ to share the word of God is very important. Otherwise, he could have said, I've risen. He would have said that. But he doesn't. He just gets straight into the word of God. And the word of God, the moment that, that, that coldness and then like the depression, disappointment, and then they're going back to their, to their village and like all of a sudden, Jesus, when he begins to speak the word of God, they say there was a fire, there was a burning sensation that came inside of us. So I have a question for all of us. Whenever you and I, we listen to the word of God, does it burn you? Does it, does it convict you? Does it steer you? Does it steer you to live a life that is godly or it never steers you at all? If it doesn't steer you at all, my brothers and sisters, I would like you to ask the Lord to give you that passion, to give you that kind of a heart that every moment you hear the word of God, you will be stirred up. I remember my story about a time when um, I got saved and then like, I, I still remember. I would go and then like, go to people where they are just sharing the word of God. Anything on the word of God. If they're sharing, I will listen. And like, if nobody is sharing, I'll go to a friend and say, I'll say, tell me your testimony of how you came to know the Lord. I really want to hear. What really happened was that those days I didn't know, but what really happened was that there was a burning inside of me that the only thing that I was consumed with was to hear the word of God. And our desire should be right now, after we have celebrated the resurrection, it's very important that we keep our hearts burning for the things of God. That's my number one point. My second point that I want to talk about this morning is, the Bible says two of them, the two disciples. You know, the Bible says like this, one can put thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. The power of two is very important. And so two of them were burning. 
Not one of them was burning, the other one was not burning. No, both of them were burning for the things of God. It's very important. When we look into the scripture, you'll always find that people who were godly had always roamed around with people that were godly. If you look in the life of Elijah and Elisha, Elijah was taken up to heaven, but before he was taken up to heaven, Elisha was his mentee. Elisha was serving him. He was a servant waiting upon him. And so what happened was that Elisha would do exactly what his spiritual father Elijah would do. In such a way, when Elijah was taken up to heaven, before he was taken up, Elisha says like this, give me your double portion. And Elijah says like this, till you see me, you'll get it. But if you don't see me, you'll never get it. And Elisha sees the fire of chariot coming and taking him over. And he gets the double portion. Shall we turn our Bible to the book of Proverbs? Because it's very important that I sort of lead you into this. And chapter 27, Proverbs 27 and verse 17. It says like this. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Elijah sharpened Elisha. Who is sharpening you today? The two friends were sharpening one another. We all need people in our life who will sharpen us. The book of Psalms says like this. In Psalms 1 it says like this. Blessed is the man who does not walk, who does not sit, who does not stand. In the counsel of the wicked. I may be a, a godly man, but if I'm surrounded by people that are wicked, I can become wicked. My thinkings can become wicked as well. And therefore it is very, very important that I need to be careful from where I'm being sharpened. As the Bible says. Do you have a person who will sharpen you for better and not for worse? I want to tell you a story from the Bible about a king, a righteous king, who mixed up with an unrighteous man or a king. And that is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 21. Shall we turn our Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 21? And I will read only one particular verse, but I would like to encourage you all the way to read from verse 1 to 7. But let me read only verse 6. And it says like this. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done, for he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. If you read this story, it's about the story of where Jehoshaphat, who was a righteous king, but he had a, he had, made a covenant and, and friendship with King Ahab, who was a very wicked king during the time, and whose wife's name was Jezebel. And so what happened was that like uh, he, Jehoshaphat met his eldest son, get married with the daughter of King Ahab. And so what happened? After Jehoshaphat died, and when his son became the king, the first thing that he did was that he killed all his siblings, all his brothers. Jehoshaphat's son, raised up in a godly family, but married to wrong lady, married a very unrighteous, from, from a very unrighteous family. His, her advice met him to kill all his brothers and sisters. Today, such kind of a things can happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that we'll kill, but we can do a lot of wicked things. Today, if our relationship with our friends are not godly, 
So I just want to just stop here and then like say something here, especially to the young people who are not married. It's very, very important that we need to marry godly spouses. I, w- I just want to reaffirm that. Because it will lead us to our eternity, to our destiny. So be very careful whom you marry. The Bible says, how can two walk together when they don't agree with one another? If you want to go to church and then like your spouse doesn't want to go to church, what is the point of getting married with him or her in the very first place? The other day, I had a person calling me and saying, I want to get married with this person. And then like, but this person is not from our Christian faith. I said, please don't do it. But then this person said, no, I'm going to go ahead with it. I said, it's up to you. So during the conversation, this person says that like, after we get married, I'll, I'll, I'll make this person to become a believer. How in the world do you and I know that we can make someone a believer? If you look in the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, it says like this. It's, by the, it's because of the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. The kindness of God leads me to repentance. Not by me. If you and I, today, we have become a Christian, it's not because we did anything good. No, it's the kindness of God that made me to come to know the Lord. And how sure are we that I can make this person become a Christian? Therefore, be very careful with whom you and I, we associate. Because that will be the deciding factor. And therefore, it's very, very important that you and I, we be careful in the way we choose our friends. The second point, that is the second point. The third point that I want to say is this. But to constrain him saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Jesus wanted to go ahead to Jerusalem actually. But then like uh, these two disciples said, come and stay with us. Remember, these two disciples still doesn't know that it is Jesus. So Jesus asked, he's already welcome, so he goes inside. And he break the bread. And the Bible says, after eating the bread, the eyes were opened. The point I want to emphasize is number three point is this. It is very important that we invite Christ into our home. Now, I know what you're thinking. Because in Nagaland, everyone is a Christian. Every Naga home is a Christian. I know that. But your understanding about Christianity is different according to the scripture. And all of us, we have to fall in line with the word of God and not with our own understanding. And so let me just explain maybe in three ways. Let me tell you three stories. Number one, if you look into the scriptures of 2 Samuel and chapter 6 and verse 11, it says like this. There was a man called Obed-Edom. The Ark of the Covenant was being brought to his house because that day uh, a lot of blacks came out and like uh, people died and, and so what happened was that like uh, uh, b- people were afraid and, and so like David didn't want to take the Ark of the Covenant to his to Jerusalem so he found the house of Obed Edom and said hey keep this Ark into the house I'm sure Obed Edom must have been very afraid to bring that Ark into, the, into his house but anyway the Ark is kept and the Bible says within three months, the life of Obed Edom was blessed. Their family was blessed. When the Christ come into our family and we truly live our life according to the word of God, what others will see is our lives will be blessed. 
whatever you touch, whatever you do, it will begin to prosper. That is a sign of Christ living in your life. Or should I say, Christ living in your home. Even for these two guys, the moment they invited Jesus Christ, their eyes were open. You and I will be open to the things of God the moment we truly, truly invite Christ into our lives. We will only like to do what Christ says. You see? We will never compromise. We'll bring our children in the things of godliness. In fact, the book of Leviticus says, you shall teach the word day and night to your children. Many of us, we don't do that. We allow our youth pastors or, or you know, the Sunday school teachers to teach our children. In fact, should I say it's a disgrace. It's important that you as a father and mother, you teach the word of God to your children. The second story that I want to tell is from the life of Zacchaeus which is found in Luke chapter 19. And Luke 19 says like this, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. He used to take money, advance, and then like he used to uh, steal from people and, and take uh, extra money. But when Jesus was passing by Jericho one day, he wanted to see who Jesus was. He climbs the sycamore tree and Jesus comes by the sycamore tree and he says, Zacchaeus, come down, I want to come to your house. Zacchaeus comes down, gladly he goes inside. And when other people were talking behind the back of Zacchaeus and Jesus, oh, he goes and eats with the sinners. What was Zacchaeus doing? Zacchaeus was repenting. Zacchaeus was saying, from now on, if I had taken any money, extra money, I'm going to give four times more. When we truly encounter Christ in our home, I want to tell you this. There is a change of our lifestyles. That's what I want to say. True lifestyle is being changed. That is called truly being born again. We still are not born again yet. Because why am I saying that we truly are not born again? There needs to be a sign of being born again. And here is Zacchaeus teaching us. Obed Edom is teaching us. And even in the book of Psalms, number 127, it says like this, unless the Lord builds the house, unless he builds your house, how much you try, your labor will go in vain. So as a family, it's very important that we invite Jesus and live our life according to what he wants us to live. My last point, number four point. The two disciples, they hurriedly run to Jerusalem. They had just come back. I'm sure they're tired. But they cannot contain to share what has happened in their life. That they saw Jesus. They run to the disciples and they share about what they saw. If you look at verse 34. This is the point I want to say. Shall we all share something of what Christ has done for you and me? You don't have to preach the word of God. Share what Christ has done for you. In another words, share your testimony. Simple. It can be one minute. Just share it. Why? There's somebody out there who wants to hear. There's someone out there who is discouraged. There's somebody out there who is looking for an answer. And who knows, you might be the answer. Your sharing might bring a hope. You never know what God can do through you. You may say, I'm just a, I'm just a simple human being. Come on, I'll tell you something. What a simple human being can do, you can change the world. The simple fisherman changed the world. How about you? You can do it. So therefore, in order to conclude my message, I just want to share something of how our hearts can be burning in three ways. Three simple steps. Number one, as you wake up every morning, 
let us spend at least 15 minutes with the Lord in prayer. Simple 15 minutes. Say what is in your heart. Be real before the Lord. And just open up your heart and then just pour it out. Number one. Number two. For the next 15 minutes, at least read the New Testament. How many chapters? Depending upon you. Maybe two chapters, three chapters. It's up to you. Five chapters. And just read the New Testament. Don't try to read the Old Testament. It'll confuse you. But read the New Testament. Beginning from Matthew. All the way to the book of Revelations. It will really help you in your walk with the Lord. And you'll have a fire for the things of God. The third point that I want to say is this. Let us all now share the word to somebody. Maybe to our friends, to our co-workers in the office, in schools. If you're a student in college, in school, don't feel shy to share it. And some of you will be persecuted. They will call you pastor. It's all right. It's okay. People also called me a pastor as a kid, as a young boy. I never liked to hear it, but today their prophecy has come true in my life. You can also become a pastor one day. Just share it. Share, just share what God has done in your life. Simple. And you never know who you can be touching your life to. You see? You never know. One day, you may touch a person's life who will go and preach the word of God all over the world. You may not go, but you never know. That person will come back to you and thank you. And therefore, let us not be very convenient Christians any longer. Let us not be comfortable with ourselves. Because Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel. This is a commandment. We need to preach the gospel. And you and I, we may not go out to the world, but let us reach out locally. And when you reach out locally, one day, you will reach to the world. In order to conclude my message this morning, I want to close up with a prayer. A prayer for all of you that you will live passionately for the kingdom of God. That we will continue to burn our hearts for the Lord. Shall we all close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your word and I want to thank you for what you've done in our lives, Lord. We are convicted by your word. We want to thank you for the word that has come so, so strong this morning. We've understood this morning that, Lord, our hearts should burn for you, Father. For so many years of our life, we've been burning our hearts for the things that is of this world, which we are never going to take it, oh God, hallelujah. But, Father, we have understood this morning that, Lord, we are to burn only for you, Father. And therefore, I pray that, Lord, every individual that is listening to me right now, I pray for a fire of God to touch them wherever they are and let them live their life beginning from today burning for you only your father hallelujah I pray for boldness to speak the word of God to share the word of God from your mouth oh God hallelujah you'll never be convenient oh God you'll never be shy I speak for those people who are shy oh God to, to give them a bold spirit oh God to speak the word of God in boldness oh God because there are so many people that are going to hell oh God and father give them the burden oh God hallelujah to share the word of God in such a way that you will stop one person endless from going to hell father I pray oh God hallelujah that Lord you will enable the family members as well this, I speak for the fathers and the mothers oh God to take the burden to share the word of God to the children hallelujah I pray that Lord hallelujah their, their education may not lead them to heaven oh God hallelujah but Lord knowing you and walking with you will only lead us to heaven and therefore let every parent oh God understand all the children purposes as well oh God hallelujah the purposes that you have sent them to this world father i pray that lord you will enable them the, you will enable the fathers and the mothers to understand that lord hallelujah thank you father thank you jesus i bless them lord we give you all the glory in jesus name we pray amen and amen